So today we got a question from Adam who's wanting to get some tips on transitioning jiu-jitsu from a pure grappling standpoint into jiu-jitsu for an MMA standpoint. And so he says, we all know you have done MMA in the past. How about a video on transitioning grappling from pure BJJ to MMA? I know others have done videos on this, but I would like to hear your thoughts on it. So, Adam, thanks for the question, dude. And um, you know, maybe when we're not going through this quarantine thing and the mats aren't empty, like right now, it's literally the time that I would be training with my guys. Maybe later on, when we're not at it, when we're not in quarantine. I'll do some videos with some of the guys and maybe give you some tips on it. But for today, I figured I would give you three things to sort of keep in your head if you're going to be someone that's gonna transition their jiu-jitsu from a pure grappling standpoint into an MMA standpoint. Because again, when I got started into MMA, I was a purple belt and I had been in a pure grappling sort of state and then I sort of went, a, went through a crash course into getting ready for my MMA fight. I only trained the striking aspects for maybe a month or two and then started fighting. Again, it was a different time period. Um, but over the years, I've learned some stuff that's made my grappling effective and I was able to use my grappling pretty effectively in most of my matches, winning most of them in first round with a submission of some sort. And so um, I'll give you some tips and hopefully these are useful to you. So the first thing, brother, that I think, this is probably one of the most helpful things that I can give you. And again, this will take some time for you to put into action, but by far one of the most important things, and that is learn how to strike. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just as simple as that. When I first started getting into the striking aspect and fighting aspect, I hated getting hit. I didn't know how to get hit. Also, going for takedowns when you're afraid to get hit and you don't understand striking is a, is a very weird thing because the timing of the striking, the movement of the striker, and even just the fear of getting hit is going to mess all that up. When you learn how to strike well, then you not only kind of get a sort of a sense as to how they're striking and when the right time to go in is, but you can also learn how to use your strikes to sort of mask your takedown attempts. A lot of times in my fights, I would use, you know, I would come out with jabs and then head movement and I would go in for my takedown. Or there was even one fight where I was going up against this boxer who I had sparred with a year before we fought. And I knew he was, if I tried to strike him, he would light me up. <laughs> so I wasn't doing that. So he, we were in the ring and fighting and he's trying trying to strike, I mean, he's trying to knock my head off. He caught me with one good shot uh, in the side of my head, it didn't feel good, but for the rest of it, I was kick leg kicking him. So I'm kicking him in his leg, and I hit him with about uh, six good leg kicks with the shin right into the meat of the thigh. And I started noticing his leg get heavy. I could see him getting really flat-footed. And then I acted like I was gonna go for a leg kick, and then I shot him for a takedown, took him down. So I masked my takedown with striking. And again, that was because after my very first fight, I realized I needed to get some striking, and so I started going to boxing gyms and started doing pure boxing and pure Muay Thai and pure all that stuff so I could learn it all and then combine it with my jiu-jitsu and my wrestling and everything else, and I could kind of mix and match what worked for me. And so I would encourage you to learn it in its pure form too. You know, if like a striker came into my gym and said he wanted to fight MMA, I would make him learn pure jiu-jitsu and pure wrestling. I wouldn't want to say, here, just do these two things and you'll be fine, because again, you don't know that. I think it's better to learn everything, to, to learn as much as you possibly can. So this way you give yourself as many tools as possible to draw on and create your style. Because you don't want to get locked into this thing where you know, people sort of write off techniques or write, ah, you don't need that, right? Because we see that a lot of times these techniques that have been written off come into play and they, they're, they're really usable, right? Like there was the front kick from Leota Machida and um, Anderson Silva. And then even recently you've had Conor McGregor use a shoulder check, which for the most part, all of us thought was just kind of an annoyance, not really a, a, a really good offensive weapon. And he used it as an offensive weapon really well. So again, you want to learn as much as possible so you can create your own style. That's your job as a mixed martial artist to create, make your own art, right? Make your own style. And then the next thing is, is that when you're creating, you're probably gonna find this, with your grappling, you're going to have to simplify it. If you watch a lot of grappling in most places, you're gonna see that it's very simple. It's very simple stuff. You don't see a lot of flashy stuff. You don't see a lot of exotic stuff. It's pretty simple. And then this, for me, comes because one is the distance. A lot of times in jiu-jitsu, we sit in what would be a terrible range for MMA because we sit in sort of this mid-range where we're right in, right in arm's reach. Well, if you're within arm's reach of someone grabbing you, you're also within arm's reach of being punched or elbowed, right? That's gonna be a bad spot to be in in a fight. So a lot of times, Sometimes in MMA, you've got to be really close <laughs> or you got to be really far away. And that's kind of the place you got to be at. And so again, this creates a thing where the jiu-jitsu is much more simple. You can even watch a really high-level jiu-jitsu competitor, watch them compete. 
and then go watch them if they fought. And they're fighting, again, it looks like their jiu-jitsu does in com competition, but it's a bit more simple. A really good example of this recently in, in U the UFC was Adolfo Vieira. Adolfo comes in, he's one of my favorite competitors uh, of all time. He's such a crazy style, aggressive style. And again, he got into that situation where he got hit in the face, he immediately charges in for his takedown, gets his takedown, gets him out, and then boom, goes for the rear naked choke when the guy turns his back. It was a very bare bones, simple jiu-jitsu. Again, very good jiu-jitsu, and there's all kinds of details that you, know, you just can't physically see that are going on, but then if you look at his jiu-jitsu style in the competitions, in jiu-jitsu competitions, similar, but again, a little bit more limited in scope. And so a lot of times what you'll find is that your jiu-jitsu will begin to be a little bit more simple. And again, you still wanna learn pure jiu-jitsu, you still wanna learn it all, but when you start to do the mixed martial arts training and you start to see what works, you'll probably find that everything has to be a bit more simple because of the striking and because of all the variables that you have to sort of account for. And along with all those variables, what that does is that creates this sense of urgency in your jiu-jitsu, and this is kind of the last tip. Your cardio for jiu-jitsu for jiu in an MMA standpoint better be tip-top. You have to have good cardio because there's been so many fights that I'm sure you've seen where the grappler goes out first round, they take the person down, they really work them on the ground, and then the second round comes around and they're done. They're cooked, right? They, they were done. They, they, all their energy went into that first round. Grappling in a jiu-jitsu standpoint and grappling in an MMA standpoint are two different animals. And one of the things that's different is the tempo. In a grappling match, you know, with a pure jiu-jitsu competition, there's this kind of tempo where it's slow, fast, and then a stop or a pause. And this is because, you know, you can think of a takedown, for instance. If I'm, if I'm going for a takedown, I'm locked up with you, I'm moving around with you, slowly getting my setup. Again, I'm expending energy, but it's at a slower pace. And then once I know that I've got my setup and I'm getting ready for, to go for my takedown, Boom, full energy, full explosion, burst of energy as I go for that takedown, right? Tons of energy being expended. And then once I get on top, I'm holding position, take my breath, sort of settle into position, and then I start to work for the next setup. In an MMA standpoint, man, because of the, the just the amount of variables that you have to think about, it can change on a dime. Anything can happen. And then the, the sense of the, the grappling, the sense of urgency is much more frantic because one, you've only got five minutes on the ground. Another thing is that they'll stand you up if you're not quick about it. And again, if, if the strikes are there, it changes everything. You look at the, the pace that Adolfo put in that last match that I'm, I'm referencing, and again, that's a frantic pace to get to that takedown because you got to hit in the face. It's a different animal. And so again, I would encourage you that if you're going to transition your jiu-jitsu from a uh, jiu-jitsu standpoint into an MMA standpoint, your cardio better be tip-top, man. And that was something that I learned because even in my very first couple of fights, they were very quick affairs. They weren't very long, but I remember how tired I was after those fights. The first one was like 30 seconds, right? I, and, and what's so funny about that fight is going back to the striking thing, I didn't know how to strike. I was sitting there across the ring, uh, George Jugel was the ref, he says, fight, I run across the ring and I'm about right here to the guy and I realize, what do I do now? <laughs> and luckily I shot in on a takedown when he went for a kick and I took him down and got the choke. But 30 seconds in there, and I was in pretty good shape at the time, and I remember I was like, whew, like my heart was going, man. And again, it's a different animal. Again, jiu-jitsu, we understand that it's, it's, a lot of times it's fun. MMA is, it's very like, there's a lot of damage that could be done to you, so you gotta be on the ball, man. So again, I would say your cardio better be through the roof if you're gonna fight into a situation, and you'll probably find that out as you're training. So you wanna definitely increase your cardio. So. Anyway, brother, I think that's the, sort of the tips there uh, for you, Adam. Striking, learn it, make your jiu-jitsu better, simplify your jiu-jitsu. This will happen naturally as you're training. And then your cardio, work on that cardio, man, because that cardio will allow you to keep the pace going and keep going and going and going. Again, a lot of times in an MMA fight, man, cardio in many cases is the deciding factor. And so it's something you definitely need to put your, your, your energy and time into. So hopefully that's helpful to you. And again, later on when the mats have some people on them, I'll try to do a video for you in the future. And if you guys have any questions about this kind of stuff, put it down in the comments below and I'll talk to you guys next time.